Hi, I'm Paul from Deutsche Auto Parts, your source for everything VW and Audi. Today we're going to be going over installing a secondary air injection pump on a 1.8T Mark IV Jetta. We'll have links to this product in the description below. On this vehicle we have a fault code for secondary air injection incorrect flow. The fault code is P0411. Now what we're going to do is go back and use our VAGCOM software to go to output test and then we're going to run through. Now here we're running our output diagnostic test mode. This is the secondary air injection solenoid valve or N112 valve. This actually controls the vacuum that runs through the combination valve and opens and closes that. Now here we're running our secondary air pump. Now as you can see on our vehicle here, it is leaking and it's going to be leaking from the seams here of the actual pump. So in our vehicle, you can't fix this as you, can, as you can feel the air coming from the actual pump itself. We actually have to replace our entire pump. Here we are underneath the vehicle and we already have the belly pan of this vehicle removed and we're at our secondary air pump. Now we're going to start by unplugging it and then we have the three 10 millimeter nuts that hold them in place and then the hoses up top that actually connect to it. Now, we're going to start by removing the hoses just because otherwise you might have a hard time getting anything off after everything's loose. And these can be pretty challenging, so sometimes you might want to try to get them worked off and and, and then start your removal of your 10 millimeters. Now one other note we'd like to make about this is this pump has mounts right here that, that mount the pump to this, this mounting bracket and they do get pretty worn. And unfortunately we don't have any here to show you the install while we're doing this. So we're gonna be re reusing these, but as you can see, or maybe you can't see, but they have small cracks in them. So it might be something you would consider replacing at that time because eventually they can break if they're starting to crack like that. All right, now that nut is gone and we just have, we should have one more hose up top we got to gain access to. Okay, so our pump is loose and our hoses are out. Now, to clear the pump from the vehicle, we actually are going to have to loosen and partially remove the mounting bracket that sits in because obviously there's no clearance to remove it. So, there, this bracket has a few 8 millimeter allens that hold it in place. And we're going to take these bottom two out and just try to loosen the top one and see if we can fish it out without taking the top on all the way out. Now I'm gonna remove this upper mounting. Seems like it's in our way. Again, you wanna hang on to these so that you can swap them over to your other pump. Okay, now we're gonna try to get the upper bolt. And that one's pretty challenging, it's gonna be up straight up behind the AC compressor. You're not gonna be able to see it on camera. It's really hard to see. You kind of have to follow the bracket with your hand up and then find it in place. It is gonna be behind these AC lines. And so you're gonna need an extension. So now we have our eight millimeter Allen in place up top and we're getting ready to break it loose. Now something we want to mention, this is tough to get to uh, and maybe difficult depending on the tools you have. So we're, we're using a special swivel head ratchet as well as a wobble extension which gives us the ability to have those things move around a little more. So this gives us a little bit of an advantage when it comes to this particular install. Okay, so now we've loosened all the bolts on the lower part 
and we have the top, we've taken the bolts on the bottom out, they're two eight millimeter Allen's, and we've loosened the top eight millimeter, and we should be able to just fish this out of the way. And may have to turn it and kind of rotate it down like that. And as you can see here, there are two bolts here and here, and then we just have a top loose. We have not removed the top bolt. If you do that, you'll probably have a really hard time getting it back in. So now we're gonna swap the mounts over to our new pump, and we're gonna get it in place. So we have our mounts on our new pump assembly, and we're gonna take this, put this one in the same way we took the other one out, that we're gonna kind of rotate it in, and then spin it around because these parts are obviously larger and get everything tucked up. And then now be careful, you wanna make sure that you don't damage any of the hoses or pipes or anything and break them during your installation because that will be a bad day. So here we have it. There is our pump in, we're gonna get the eight millimeters for the bracket threaded in place before we start to mount up anything else. All right, so we have our lower bolt threaded in place. We left our ratchet up here and we are gonna now tighten the upper one back. Now we're tight. All right, we can pull. I ratchet off and then we're going to take our Allen out and mount it back to snug up these two eight millimeters down the bottom here. All right, now it's tightened up. Now we can get our hoses back mounted and get our studs mounted in place. We'll start with this hose. And all you're gonna do is push until you hear it audibly click in place. And the same with this one. Now the most important one is gonna be the smaller hose because it is the pressure side and if that leaks, you're going to continue to have a check engine light. We can get our 10 millimeters in place. I like to start with the hard to reach one up here. All right, now we can plug it in place and finish tightening these up. And now we're ready to do some testing. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and leave any questions, ideas, or feedback in the comments below.